what's up YouTube friends today I'm going to show you how to make this easy quilt as you go table runner here now this one is on the shorter side of a table runner the finished size is about 14 inches by 27 inches now usually I like to make mine at least 36 inches long like 32 to 36 but mother likes the short ones on the table when it's just me and her at the table and there's no leaves in our table the shorter ones work out pretty well now I backed this one with this heart print, that way I could use it for Valentine's Day, and the front here could just be for every day. So the things that you're going to need to make this quilt as you go table runner are a half a yard of backing fabric, and I'll be using this cute heart print, a half a yard of batting. Now I actually don't have the half a yard, so I'm going to have to join two pieces together, but it will be fine. You'll need a half a yard of black fabric in my case. Now this is going to be my binding and also the black rectangles on the table runner itself. And you're also going to need some jelly roll strips. These are two and a half inches by the width on the bolt. And I actually got these in a package at Walmart and it came with 14 strips, two of each color. Now I've already made two of these table toppers and I still have seven strips left. So just with these seven strips here, I can get two table toppers. Now I chose these because it was bright, fun colors, and it also kind of matched with the heart fabric. Now I got this idea off of Pinterest, but when I went to click on the link, there was no link there. So I kind of just made this up as I went along. You're also going to need your iron and ironing board, sewing machine with matching thread, and if you have one, a walking foot is very helpful. So let's get started. So the first thing that I went ahead and did was I cut my jelly roll strips into 14 10 inches by 2 and a half inch pieces. Now to do that, all I did was keep it folded. And I stacked a couple at a time. And then I just went ahead and I cut it into 10 inch sections. So for each strip here, I got four pieces. You're only going to need two of each color. And that's what I have right here. So like I said, just out of those seven strips, you can get two table toppers out of that. Next, I took my black fabric. I had a half a yard of that, and I cut that up into two and a half inch strips. Now two or three of them I left long for my binding, and I set those aside. So with the remaining black strips here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut these up into 14 5 inch by 2 and a half inch pieces. So I'm going to do it exactly like I did my colored strips. So I have two strips here, one on top of the other, and they're still folded in half. And I'm just going to go along here and cut at every 5 inches. Just like that. Now I got about eight rectangles per strips, so some of these are just going to be leftovers. Next you want to grab one of your color pieces, one of your black pieces. I'm going to lay them so the right sides are touching. And with a quarter inch seam allowance, I'm going to sew right down the seam. And you want to do that to all of your strips with your black strips. Alright, so I'm over here at my sewing machine. My length is a two. I'll be using a straight stitch and a quarter inch seam allowance. And I'm just gonna sew right down this side. Without even breaking my thread, I'm gonna grab my next piece of fabric, my next black piece, line them up so the pretty sides are touching and sew that quarter inch seam allowance. And I'm going to continue to chain piece these all together until all 14 pieces are sewn. So after you chain piece all your strips together, I'm just going to go ahead and clip them apart. And with my iron, I'm going to go ahead and set my seams. And I want to iron these all to the black fabric. 
And I'm going to do that to all 14 strips. All right, guys, so when you're finished pressing your strips here, now it's time to lay it out. So first, I'm going to start with this purple one with the black facing up. Next, I'll do the red one with the black facing the bottom. Then orange, pink, teal, green, and then yellow. Now that's half of my table topper right there. Now I'm just going to repeat with the rest of my strips. So starting with the purple, this time it should be facing down. So it should look something like this. At this point here, I'd like to take a picture of it just so I remember the layout here. And you want to find your two middle strips. Now because I started with the purple, my eighth strip here is purple. So the purple and the yellow one will be your middle strips. So I'm just going to lay purple over my yellow. And the rest of these I'm just going to stack up and set off to the side. So I went ahead and I cut my backing and my batting down to the same size. It's 17 inches wide by 37 inches long. So now I'm just going to lay my backing with the pretty side facing down. Grab your batting piece and lay that over the top. And now I'm just going to smooth this out and make sure there's no wrinkles or creases anywhere. Next I'm just going to flip it over and make sure there's no wrinkles on the fabric side. Alright, that looks good to me. I'm going to flip it back over and just to be sure I'm going to smooth this out again. As you can see right here, my batting didn't come all the way down, so you just need to hold up here and kind of rake your fingers. Alright, that looks pretty good to me. Now I'm just going to pin. So I'm just going to stick one in every corner here. And also up here in the middle, but towards the top. And I'm also going to do that at the bottom. If you want, you can also throw one in the middle here on both sides. If you have spray base, this will be a perfect time to use it. So now I just want to fold my table runner in half and finger press it. Now when I open it up, I can see that I have a line right here. And that's the middle of my table topper. So now I'm just going to take my yellow and my purple piece, the center fabrics of my table runner, and I'm going to line up the right edge here of my fabric with that finger press and pin. Now I just eyeballed it. You could go ahead and measure, but you just want to make sure you have an even amount of extra backing and batting up here at the top. So now I'm just going to take this over to my sewing machine. And with a quarter inch seam allowance, I'm going to sew right down this edge here. If you have a walking foot, now is a great time to put it on. Alright, so I switched my foot to a walking foot. Now I'll be using a straight stitch and I bumped up my length to a 3. If you don't have a walking foot, it's not necessary, but it does help. So with a quarter inch seam allowance, I'm going to sew all the way down. Now when I'm sewing down these strips, I like to just smooth out my fabric just to make sure there's no creases or wrinkles. And there's no need to backstitch at the beginning or the end. Alright guys, so now I'm just going to come here and set my seam. I'm going to open up my flap and press it over. So next I'm going to take, in my case, the red piece. If you don't remember what piece goes next, go ahead and reference the picture you took. So I'm going to lay these with the pretty sides facing and I'm going to line up this seam with this seam here. 
on my first piece and I'm going to pin that together. So now I'm just going to take this over to my sewing machine and with that quarter inch seam allowance I'm going to sew right down that seam. And I'll continue to do that until I have this side all filled up. Alright guys, so I just sewed on my final strip on this side. So I'm going to iron it back. And now I'm just going to rotate my table runner here. So now I just want to do the same thing on this side. So my next color is going to be green. So I'm going to line up my raw edges here and match up my seam here with the seam on the previous strip here. Pin it and sew it with that quarter inch seam allowance. I'll show you how to trim this up when I get this finished. All right guys, so I have all my strips sewed on here and before I cut off any of the extra backing and batting, I like to give it a good press. So now I'm just gonna trim off these short edges first. So I'm going to line up a line on my ruler with this seam right here. So what I did was I came in two and a quarter inches and I'm going to cut it off. So I'm going to flip it around to the other side and do the same thing. So I came in two and a quarter, matched it up with my seam line. Now just cut it off. So now I just want to cut off my long sides. I know that the edges I just cut are pretty straight, so I lined up my ruler down here at the bottom. It also happens to line up right here at my 16 inch mark. That way I know my ruler is nice and straight. And I'm just going to bring my ruler in until I have a nice clean cut and all these jagged edges are gone. Now our edges are nice, straight, and squared. Now it's time to attach the binding. So I'm going to take two of my strips of binding here. In my case I'm using the black and I cut them to two and a half inch strips. Now I'm just going to cut off any salvage here at the ends. Now you just want to take one of your strips and lay it so the pretty side is facing up. This black fabric really doesn't have a right or wrong side. I'm going to lay my other strip here, pretty sides facing down. And I'm going to line up this edge with the side of this strip and this edge with the top of this strip. And put some pins. So now I'm just going to take this over to my sewing machine and using a straight stitch I'm going to sew from corner to corner. When I'm done with that I'll just clip off this little dog ear here leaving a quarter inch seam allowance. Now I'm just going to take my ironing board here I'm going to fold my strip in half with the wrong sides touching and I'm going to iron it all the way down the length of my binding strip. So once you have your strip all pressed in half, you want to take your table runner and I'd like to start my binding on the back. I'm going to match up the raw edge of my binding with the raw edge on my table runner here. And I'm going to stick a pin leaving a good six to eight inch tail. Now from that pin, I'm gonna measure over 10 inches and stick another pin. This will be my stopping point. So now I'm just gonna take this over to my sewing machine. I'm gonna start right here at this pin and with a quarter inch seam allowance, I'm gonna sew all the way down. When I get to this corner, I'm gonna stop about a quarter inch away. I'm gonna stop with my needle down, pivot, and I'm going to sew right off the corner. So just pretend that this pin is my seam line. I'm then going to cut my thread. I'm going to fold back my binding just like that so this edge matches this edge and then I'm going to fold it back over again. Matching the raw edges along the side here and you should have a little flap that looks just like this. Then I'm going to start right here off my project and keep sewing all the way down. Now don't forget to backstitch at the beginning and the end. And when I hit this pin right here, I'm going to backstitch and break my thread. I'll show you what to do to join our two pieces of binding together at the end. 
All right, so I have my binding sewed on here to the back, and now we just wanna close up this flap. To do that, all we're gonna to wanna to do is overlap this piece with this piece by two and a half inches and clip it off. So now we just wanna open up this piece so that our point here is facing up. I'm gonna open up this piece so that it's facing down. So I threw a couple pins here. So now I'm just gonna take this over to my sewing machine and I'm gonna sew corner to corner and clip off the dog ear, leaving a quarter inch seam allowance. All right, so now when we open this up, we have the perfect amount of binding to finish up our little table topper here. So now I'm just gonna take this back over to my sewing machine. I'm gonna start right here where I stopped. I'm gonna sew all the way down until I get to where I began. And don't forget to backstitch at the beginning and the end, and that'll close up this hole. So now you just wanna fold your binding to the front of our table runner. And we're gonna take this over to our sewing machine, and I like using a zigzag stitch. So I'm gonna fold my binding so it's just over the seam we just sewn. And when I zigzag, I'm gonna zig onto the fabric, and when I zag, I'm just gonna come off the edge of the binding here. When I get to a corner here, I'm gonna fold my binding so it's straight off the project. I'm then gonna take this next piece and fold it over. And as you can see, I have a nice mitered corner. Now, if you'd like a more detailed instruction on how I like to put on my binding, go ahead and check out my Quilt As You Go Halloween table topper, and it's the exact same thing. All right guys, so I switched my stitch to a zigzag stitch. My length is a three and my width is a four. And I just folded my binding over just so it's right past this seam that we just made when we sewed on our binding to the back. Don't forget to backstitch at the beginning and the end and just keep sewing. All right guys, so I'm coming up here on my corner and normally I would just fold this down flat and then fold up this bottom piece to give me my mitered corner. But a lot of the times I always had to fight that fold. So now what I like to do is I like to fold up the bottom part first, then fold over the side. And that way you're not fighting that flap. All right guys, so now I just stopped with my needle down. I'm gonna raise my presser foot and spin and continue to sew. All right. So now our easy quilt as you go table runner is complete. Here's the front and here's the back. I think they're equally as beautiful. Now, like I said in the beginning, this finishes about 14 inches by 27 inches, but if you'd like it longer, go ahead and add a few more strips. Now, I think this will be great for everyday use, and of course, the hearts will be perfect for Valentine's Day. I hope you give this project a try. If you like this project and want to see more of my projects, go down below and hit the big red subscribe button and give this video a big thumbs up. If you'd like to be notified when I put up a video, go down below and hit the bell button right next to the subscribe button. If you'd like to share pictures and ideas of your projects, head over to Facebook and hit the friend button for Scrappy's Patch. If you have a question about this video or any of my other videos, or would just like to leave a suggestion for a future upcoming video, leave me a comment. Feel free to share this video across your social medias. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.